This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrulonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT Television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. Jeff Andrelonis is off this week. Topping the 6 o'clock report, the Oleander restaurant will have its grand opening today after the Food Network spent two whole days renovating the space. WVTT's Ashley Masala went down to the Oleander to get an inside scoop, but they're still not spilling any of their secrets. The Oleander is getting an extreme makeover, but not from ABC. The local restaurant will have its television debut on Restaurant Impossible in October on the Food Network. But tonight, the revamped Oleander will open its doors for the first time after the takeover. According to unofficial sources, opening night is already completely booked with reservations. A mother and daughter from Buffalo drove all the way to Olean today, hoping to catch a glimpse of Restaurant Impossible host Robert Irvine. Have you seen this star here yet? About a 10 second glimpse I did. So he's here? He is. <laughs> and the vehicle's here, so I know he's here. We're here at the Oleander where crews are still finishing up work for the show Restaurant Impossible on the Food Network channel. We hope to see the finished product soon and we can't wait to see how it turns out. In Olean, I'm Ashton Masala with News Channel 25 WBTT. It will be Lakeshore Paving that will be funding the East State Street construction extension, giving the much-needed roadway almost $1 million to work with. The reconstruction will range from the King Street to the city's eastern line, including new sewers, curbs, and gutters to perhaps alleviate the drainage issue that the east side of Olean has dealt with for years. The paperwork has been sent to Lakeshore, and once the deal is set, the project will begin as early as next week, August 1st. Another place in Olean is getting a facelift. WBTT's Molly Inglet has more. Right now, all that's at Fornes Park is a vacant building and a rundown miniature golf course. However, by next spring, ETJM Properties plans to have a fully functional recreation center in place where residents in Olean can go to enjoy some family fun. ETJM Properties proposed the project to Olean's planning board on July 9th, and we'll find out if the board approved the $5.7 million project on Monday. If approved, a two-story recreation building called Good Times of Olean will be built at the park. WVTT spoke with Dennis Pezzamenti, a realtor involved with securing proper paperwork for the project, who told us a little bit about what ETJM plans to do. Yeah, it's going to be a recreational center, and it's more for um, families to get out and, you know, to get not only kids off the couch, but to get parents and everyone else off the couch. <laughs> Pizzamenti also said that Good Times of Olean will include other activities, such as a volleyball court, the renovated miniature golf course, restaurants, and much more. If approved, Pizzamenti predicts the construction will start soon. Hopefully construction will start in the next few weeks. Um, completion, we're looking at probably the end of spring next year. ETJM Properties plans to hit a hole-in-one. In Olean, Molly Inglet, News Channel 25, WVTT. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has some explaining to do after he was accused of editing state records from an important case he worked on as Attorney General. The New York Times published an article yesterday saying that Cuomo sent his aides to remove key documents stored in state archives from public view. The documents are from a 2007 case concerning a politician misusing a state aircraft. Today, the Cuomo administration stated that the documents were made in public error. However, state archive officials say that Cuomo's aides are pre-screening the material under the Freedom of Information Law, which is common when there is sensitive material. Well, with the addition of the Allegheny River and the Cataraugus Creek to New York's state list of designated inland waterways, opportunities for economic development, job growth, and waterfront revitalization are increasing. Governor Andrew Cuomo designated both bodies of water as official inland waterways. Because of these additions to the list, both bodies of water are now eligible for federal grants. Well, hundreds of people took part in a noisy rally at the state capitol in Harrisburg earlier this week to pro -state protest the state's new mandatory photo voter ID law, sponsored by the Pennsylvania NAACP. One of the parties is bringing the lawsuit before the Commonwealth Court by seeking to block the law from taking effect before November 6th, which is Election Day. Senator Dalen Lynch. 
excuse me, Leach says he introduced a bill to repeal the voter ID law. Tomorrow, a group of over 1,000 New York business leaders will speak out about how fracking jeopardizes their economic livelihood. These businesses from across the state are joining in opposition to fracking in New York, and the New Yorkers Against Fracking Coalition is calling on Governor Cuomo to ban fracking. New Yorkers Against Fracking will host a conference on Thursday to hear from business leaders from various regions of New York. Congressman Tom Reed yesterday congratulated four natives of the 29th Congressional District who will represent the United States at the upcoming Olympic Games in London. The Olympians include Molly Huddle, who will be part of the USA track and field team running the 5,000 meter race, Abby Wambach, who is a member of the USA women's soccer team, Henrik Rummel, he's on the men's rowing team, and Megan Musnicki is also on the women's rowing team. Congressman Reed says that the dedication, perseverance, and discipline that these four athletes exhibit stands as an example for all of us, and he added that he wishes the four Olympians good luck and eagerly looks forward to cheering them on as they compete for gold. Well, a heated debate about the future of the Bartlett House in Oliant erupted at the Common Council meeting yesterday. Derek Smith has more on that. Taxpayers say enough is enough in terms on maintaining the Bartlett Museum. Cattaraugus County is among the highest taxed counties in the country. And to pay out of their own pocket for something that isn't generating any more revenue, they say is a burden. Yesterday, Common Council officials discussed the amount of work needed for the Bartlett House to remain running and fell into a list full of problems. Painting, porch, and other construction problems stand in the way of being completely renovated. The council didn't vote on whether or not to fix the problem right away. But according to one of the council members, they say a possibility of trying to sell it might be at hand. The common council legislators wouldn't make a bid on the reconstruction of the Bartlett House last night because it could be a bigger project than anticipated. On the other hand, director of the Bartlett House campus, David Degman, says he wasn't aware the museum needed any types of funding and is concerned that the common council members lack the knowledge to maintain the Bartlett House and are unaware of how much history comes out of this museum. Deckman also maintains that he has the deed to the house and if anyone tries to sell it, he will take up legal action. Deckman has declined to comment at this time. Here in Olean, I'm Derek Smith, Channel 25, WVTT. More of this 6 o'clock report on News Channel 25 WVTT is coming up next. Don't go anywhere.